Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to this video where I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, ServiceNow vendor risk management today. Um, my name is Karel Janssen. I'm going to take you through this, uh, this uh, demonstration video today. I myself am responsible for one of the global centers of excellence within Platformation. So I'm responsible for the security and trust practice where I work with a team of dedicated specialists towards helping our customers in providing subject matter expertise in the domains of GRC yeah, or integrated risk management, cybersecurity, privacy, business continuity, and of course, third party risk management, which is what we will be talking about uh, today in, uh, in, in more detail. Our mission is to help our customers to become more resilient, better protected, and highly effective with great ServiceNow solutions. Um, so today I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of the, the ServiceNow platform. I think it is very important to underline and to appreciate eh, that ServiceNow is truly a, a very broad platform, eh, a workflow platform that empowers the organization eh, to connect many different teams, departments and, and functions. And this is also really where the value is derived from. So it's important to appreciate that what we're going to look at in the demonstration today and the third party risk management workflows is really part of a bigger whole and is connected to many other uh, domains in the organizations. <clears throat> then we're going to zoom in on uh, ServiceNow integrated risk management, which is actually uh, a, a bigger product suite of which the, uh, the vendor risk <coughs> management application is a part of. Uh, so that sits within the integrated risk product suite after which we're going to zoom in uh, in a little bit more detail into vendor risk or third party risk management and the core functionalities and capabilities therein, after which I'm going to go uh, and show you that in a live demo. <clears throat> um, so to start with uh, a brief overview of ServiceNow. So it is truly important to appreciate and to recognize that ServiceNow is not one solution or a set of multiple solutions, uh, uh, multiple point solutions. ServiceNow truly is a, uh, it's a, an enterprise workflow platform that really allows us to connect many, many different functions and teams and people across the organization. Um, at the top, what we're seeing here is uh, the engagement layer. So ServiceNow uh, allows, is a, a born in the cloud platform um, and it allows to be interacted with through uh, different browser types, of course, but also through mobile. Uh, we can integrate or interface with all sorts of collaborate, collaborative tools like uh, Teams and like Workplace uh, to really, truly connect and to, to integrate uh, uh, all of these different uh, people and teams across the organization. It has state of the art interfacing capabilities with all the, let's say, major tool solutions out there like SAP and, and Oracle and Salesforce. And it has, of course, state of the art yeah, API uh, uh, capabilities to integrate with any, let's say, homegrown or legacy solution uh, out there to really, let's say, consolidate operational data into uh, a single platform. <clears throat> and what we see in the middle here in this big green box are basically had uh, a core um products on the platform so the functional products what we're going to look at today in detail uh, is the integrated risk management product suite and then in particular the little blue box over here vendor risk management but as you can see this is just let's say one piece in a very big platform with many many capabilities uh. so some other examples um with also potential overlapping use cases are for instance uh, the IT service management uh, um, product suite where we have a full set have to truth to fully digitize the ITIL function in the uh, in the organization, for instance, uh, where we can manage IT incidents, changes, uh, problems, release management, etc. IT operations management for full, let's say, discovery capabilities of the IT landscape where we can start to auto populate. Uh, the, 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 the master data model had a common data model, the, the co configuration management database, which really yeah, can be seen as the skeleton of the platform uh, where we start to model our IT landscape. And on top of that also uh, service layers, 
business service layers, process layers, uh, uh, departmental, huh, so organizational structure. So the platform really has uh, a, a fully a full set, a best practice uh, data model to really completely, let's say, uh, accommodate <clears throat> the uh, organizational structure that uh, really allows us in the end uh, to connect all those different teams through um, uh, smart work workflows where we, for instance, also uh, um, leverage the, the core workflow uh, engine capabilities. Um, there are many other products uh, like uh, IT business management, for instance, to uh, manage the, the, the strategic portfolio of the organization. We can connect and integrate with CICD pipelines in, in DevOps. And additionally, uh, we have a full, let's say, suite to manage security operations where we can, for instance, start to integrate with uh, vulnerability scanning applications like Rapid7. Tenable, uh, Qualys, uh, and other solutions to start to really consolidate all of the relevant uh, cybersecurity threat, uh, intel, <coughs> and vulnerability data across the organization. And again, use uh, the, the, the workflow platform to auto assign certain tasks to the right people uh, immediately. Um, integrated risk management. I'm going to skip this one because in the next slide we'll zoom into that in a little bit more. But there are many more other capabilities. Huh? Also, for instance, HR, huh? where we have a full suite to uh, manage, uh, for instance, onboarding processes, offboarding processes, where we can keep track of uh, uh, training and certifications uh, in regards to, you know, um, compliance and risk. That's uh, of course uh, very relevant also. Um, many other solutions like customer service management, where we can, can really start to connect the platform with our external stake, uh, with our external uh, customer ecosystem, where on the other hand, we have our vendor risk management and vendor performance management capabilities to connect to the supplier side. Eh? Yeah, so um, in short, many, many products and, and capabilities um, that, that truly allow us to connect all of these different teams and people with with standardized best practice uh, workflows and solutions in in one platform, one architecture, one data model uh, that that sits on uh, a foundation of of uh, many core uh, capabilities. Yeah, to really let's say amplify the value towards all of these different people and teams. <clears throat> Um, if you want to know more about any of the other products, then uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Of course, we are happy to uh, to explain more about that. But for this uh, for this session, I'm going to uh, to continue. Let's uh, take a look at the um, the specific integrated risk portfolio suite. After which, we'll zoom in to um, yeah, third party risk management as a as a suite. Um, yeah, so. Integrated risk management in ServiceNow hey, can, almo can almost be considered as a, let's say, a, a platform, a GRC platform within the broader ServiceNow platform, which again consists of uh, 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 modular building blocks that we can see here at the top. Uh, today we're going to focus on uh, third party risk management as a, as a suite, as an application that consists of multiple workflows. But you can see that there are yeah, many other, let's say, larger building blocks uh, like policy compliance, regulatory change, risk and audit, which really form the foundation uh, to digitize your three lines of defense organization, where we can then manage uh, uh, our frameworks like ISO, like COVID, like NIST, connect those to our uh, uh, internal company policies from which we can start to operationalize controls to our first line of defense. We can start to execute uh, risk assessments and monitor risk across the, the enterprise with different risk methodologies and heat maps, report on risk events, many, and many other things. And of course, we have a, a, an audit management application which really has supports the third line of defense in, 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 in planning, conducting, uh, and, and keeping track of, of many uh, different audit uh, engagements in parallel across the organization. <clears throat> 
business continuity management is a suite really yeah? uh, a dedicated suite to support you in executing your business impact assessments for instance and uh, uh, um, let's say registering your uh, business continuity and disaster recovery plans uh, where we can execute uh, exercises upon and when a, a crisis hits we have a single cockpit and a pane of glass to um, yeah to 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 monitor keep track of uh, the actions to get back into business as soon as possible. Uh, uh, an ESG solution, um, yeah, really to keep track of uh, uh, of ESG uh, uh, targets, KPIs across the organization to make sure that we are also in compliance with um, uh, um, um, environmental, social uh, and governance regulations and policies. And finally, yeah, the, our privacy solution, which really uh, supports the organization in um, Keeping track of the, um, the 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 records of processing, uh, the the registry of processing activities, uh, where we can start to uh, identify across the organization where in our organization are we processing certain personal identifiable information, and how is that connected uh, to certain systems and processes, etc. And at the foundation here. One thing that I really would like to draw your attention to, uh, um, especially in the context of risk management, uh, vendor risk management, uh, information security, privacy, and all of these things, they are foundationally uh, should be connected into a, 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 yeah, a common data model. Uh, they should be connected into mostly into our IT landscape, of course. So that's where I, uh, our configuration management database our service aware configuration management database, which is listed here, really have forms the skeleton of the platform is and is a, a, um, a, a fundament to uh, any, let's say, information security or, or risk management program. Huh? If we if we don't know what we have in terms of assets in our in our organization, then then how do we protect it? And the same goes for our vendors. Huh? Starting off with a <clears throat> a, uh, an, a view of our vendor portfolio and how that connects to the services and products that we are, let's say, using huh, from this vendor. Uh, that tells us something also about the certain criticality of these vendors. So it's cannot stress enough uh, that let's say that 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 common data model, that that fundamental platform where we connect all of these different, let's say, assets and things and people and teams. Is is really um, uh, essential to truly realize uh, an integrated risk uh, uh, platform, and that is why we very much also believe that ServiceNow is really the platform to uh, to achieve that with. Um, I'm going to uh, to continue um, here an overview of the integrated risk product suite. I'm not going to talk too much about this. It uh, articulates in a little bit more detail. Uh, uh, which of the capabilities is uh, doing what? Um, today we're going to look, of course, at uh, vendor risk management. <clears throat> I'm going to continue. Um, starting off with uh, the, the classical vendor risk or third party risk uh, challenge uh, that we uh, experience, that we see at customers where especially customers working with a larger ecosystem of suppliers uh, uh, that are relying on uh, traditional tools like Excel and, and Word and email in trying to uh, interact and, and, and streamline information exchange between the organization and the supplier ecosystem. We can see that uh, uh, um, more often than not, uh, this is going to result into many bottlenecks uh, and inefficiencies with the different departments and teams having to engage in a certain degree with particular suppliers, depending on the products or services that they are providing. Uh, um, this kind of exchange of information uh, becomes um, um, problematic and that is visualized in this uh, in this picture, uh, of course. Uh, so uh, Excel sheets, uh, Word and email sent across different teams in the organization with different contact persons in the supplier ecosystem with many suppliers. That's uh, yeah, that will result into um, uh, inefficiencies, redundancies uh, inevitably. <clears throat> so how do we solve that eh? um, in our solution with ServiceNow? Is to really start to have a, uh, a centralized, uh, yeah, let's say platform, eh? um, uh, a centralized point of engagement for 
not only uh, the people in our own organization, but also very much actually for the vendors. Uh, so we are going to have our vendors engage with us through a self-service portal through which we can um, start to uh, um, uh, send out certain assessments. We can uh, uh, send out certain document requests, for instance, in regards to certifications for ISO uh, or SOC, for instance, in the context of uh, information security. And we can uh, assign certain, uh, um, let's say, tasks and, and keep track of issues if anything is wrong with the answers that were submitted by a vendor. And we all streamline and centralize that through uh, that, that, that single platform. <laughs> Um, and um, yeah, on top of that, um, as a starting point, actually, uh, it's, it all starts with our vendor catalog. So it is a single portfolio within the platform of our vendors from which we start to firstly, let's say, conduct tiering assessments internally. So depending on the products and services that, um, uh, that uh, our vendors are providing us with, we may need to conduct more or less scrutiny, or we may have to be more stringent on the level of scrutiny that we apply on certain highly critical vendors versus less critical vendors. Uh, so this is all supported with <clears throat> out of the box capabilities in service now yeah. so um, we're going to show you that in the in the demo in a little bit as well of course yeah. but the uh, the core product capabilities are listed here yeah. so a, a single uh, source of truth for our vendor uh, uh, portfolio where we keep track of all of the different suppliers that we're working with with all the relevant details listed the the relevant vendor contacts that we can maintain there uh, after which we start to conduct internally uh, on our vendor portfolio, uh, our tiering assessments. So we're going to classify our vendors to determine the level of scrutiny that needs to needs to be applied. Uh, a particular vendor that uh, uh, provides, provides us with um, a critical ERP system uh, requires more scrutiny than a vendor that maybe um, 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 yeah, supplies us with, um, with our catering, which is also very important, but <laughs> in the context of the criticality for the business, uh, maybe, um, maybe less. And this is also how we can uh, start to uh, optimize allocation of resources towards, um, 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 yeah, let's say, um, researching our vendors huh? um, to find the right balance there. And then, as I said, through the, the, the portal, we have completely out of the box workflows had to set up uh, different types or templates of risk uh, uh, engagements, uh, vendor risk engagements and assessments where we have standard questionnaires uh, within the, the SIG domain, for instance, but we can also uh, formulate our own uh, uh, surveys uh, and assessments. Uh, we can send out certain document requests and everything that that sent that is sent out uh, the the vendor contacts will receive a notification which we will see and they will be interacting with us no longer through email through word or excel no it will all be streamlined through uh, the platform so that we can uh, um, let's say have a very nice complete and accurate audit trail um, in case a regulator is is looking for that, for instance, and this is where we, um, yeah, also not only reduce redundancies but also um, actually reduce risk of, of for instance, uh, audit findings and, um, yeah, an overall better system to manage um, um, uh, risk in regards to our suppliers. <coughs> Um, yeah, so some more slides on our portal view, et cetera, but I'm actually going to um, move now to uh, yeah, my other screen um, to my uh, ServiceNow demo instance. And what we are looking at uh, currently here is one of the landing pages in ServiceNow. We're looking at a um, uh, the landing page for the, the vendor risk or vendor manager. What's important to underline is that in ServiceNow for different personas, we have different user experiences. So what we're going to start now with is the user experience for, let's say, the, the, the persona, the vendor risk manager that is working in the, in the organization. And later on in the, in the demo, I'm also going to show you, of course, what the user experience looks like from the vendor perspective. So the vendor that will be, let's say, navigating to a self-service portal to submit to certain requests, document requests, assessments, etc. 
So what I'm looking at now is the landing page for a vendor, uh, the vendor manager. Um, and I can quickly see at a glance already some uh, key uh, information highlights like the total number of vendors, um, let's say distributed by uh, criticality rating, something about my total engagements and also risk ratings in regards to those. I have a little pain here with the quick action so I can start to uh, immediately, let's say, um, uh, create additional vendors that I want to work with or engagements or tiering assessments. And scrolling down a little bit further, uh, I see some more visual graphic, uh, some graphical visualizations on the yeah the the, the data, the the vendor risk data that I am uh, maintaining in the platform, with something about the vendors grouped by vendor tier. Eh? So uh, again, those tiering assessments, top risk area. So what does the risk landscape look like, uh, eh? and what kind of what type of risks are arising from my vendor ecosystem? And uh, yeah, of course, an, an overview of issues. Huh? So issues is also explained in the previous, um, yeah, one of the previous videos in this series. Issues are really an integrate, integral component within integrated risk management. Huh? So issues can be tracked and mapped against, um, yeah, vendors, but also against, um, yeah, for instance, certain controls in the three lines of defense or. Uh, particular systems or, or departments, and really those are can be connected to different um, yeah, uh, uh, types of objects, so to speak. Uh, in addition, we can also track, let's say, a risk in, in regards to our fourth parties, uh, so vendors from our vendors, which are visualized in some, uh, yeah, some, some uh, graphs over here. Um, yeah, so what I want to do now is I want to take you, let's say, through um, a little bit more detail. Um, let's let's look at some of the other panes uh, first. Eh? So here, a dedicated pane with uh, visualizations of vendor risk. Eh? So here I can see some more breakdowns in regards to certain open assessments, assessments that are overdue and or pending. Same for my issues and my tasks. So at a glance, I can immediately see, you know, where are still, you know, pending things for my attention to be uh, to be looked at. Um, and additionally, some some graphical visualizations about my tasks, about my issues, uh, and about my uh, assessments. They're all click through, of course, eh? and I can also, let's say, easily filter a little bit here on these kinds of um, <clears throat> reports. Additionally, I have a, let's say, single pane of glass for all of my tasks. So I see here certain vendor risk issues, tasks and tiering assessments. Uh, additionally, tasks can be grouped by, uh, yeah, by group actually. It can be assigned to certain groups as well. Um, I have a performance tab. So currently I don't think we have any data that is displaying uh, uh, over here, but this is really the other side of the uh, of the coin to, uh, to, uh, to risk management where we in ServiceNow can also not only track the, the risk side of things, but also performance. Eh? So in terms of SLAs, uh, um, our contracts being met, uh, we can manage the entire onboarding process in the procurement management application. So this is really where the power of the platform is also uh, comes together. We can really track the entire life cycle of the, of the vendor. This is an administrative pane um, <clears throat> with, uh, which shows actually all of the relevant um, uh, uh, menu items that I can zoom in on to uh, in more detail. Uh, for now, I just want to take a look quickly at uh, the total list of vendors. So I have a total of 87 vendors in my uh, in my overview. And maybe a couple of quick tips. Uh, so for instance, here uh, I can also, if I want to, well, let's say filter in this kind of a list, I can easily, let's say, apply a, a direct filter here by say show matching, for instance which now uh, 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 applies a filter, and I'm now only looking at vendors that have a vendor tier of moderate. I can easily export any kind of list in service now uh, to PDF or to, to Excel or anything else um, to share that with anybody else in my, uh, in my organization. Let's take out the, uh, the filter here, huh? so I can uh, set up an advanced filter, a filter on any kind of field that I want quite quickly uh, to, um, to visualize uh, that data. Let's, as an example, uh, take a look at one of the uh, one of the vendors that I have in my uh, in my system, of which uh, that I'm tracking. Let's say, let's look at the vendor uh, uh, called Acer. <coughs> and if I open up this particular vendor, um, yeah, then I see uh, immediately some information about this uh, this vendor. 
Um, so it's showing me, uh, for instance, uh, some of the details here. Uh, certain uh, yeah, KPI scores. Currently, I don't have a, a, a vendor risk score, um, but it immediately tells me something about the, um, yeah, the, the relevant uh, information attributes uh, about this particular vendor. I can also visualize certain uh, vendor contacts that are listed to this uh, particular vendor. Uh, and I can also see whether the, the vendor, let's say, fits into a certain hierarchy. Um, so uh, um, we can have a, a grouping of vendors, for instance, and yeah, also uh, components or elements that are, let's say, lying underneath to this vendor. So uh, the vendor Acer has multiple engagements ongoing that we can start to visualize here. For this demo, let's let's focus a little bit on that, uh, where I can um, see, for instance, uh, the, the the risk score based on the the tiering assessments, the combined scores of the tiering assessments and the risk assessments. You can see what kind of engagements are ongoing and uh, possible risk areas. If I scroll down and I see also some more <clears throat> a graphical visualizations yeah, for certain assessments that are ongoing for this particular vendor, some that are overdue, uh, my issues and tasks that are uh, that I have assigned as a vendor manager to this uh, particular uh, to this particular vendor. Um, yeah, I can also visualize actually in my uh, 360 uh, 360 view. Uh, which is a nice um, kind of a HUD kind of uh, uh, experience eh? where I can start to um, yeah, see quickly in, a, in a, another, let's say, single pane of glass, you know, uh, what, what, what kind of things are happening around this vendor, uh, um, what kind of engagements and assessments and tiering assessments are, um, yeah, are, are, let's say, associated and ongoing for this particular vendor. <clears throat> and of course, also what kind of products am I uh, using? Am I consuming from this particular vendor? Very important, of course. Yeah, going back to my uh, to my uh, previous view, <clears throat> here I have, of course, a, a details tab, right, where I can uh, keep track of uh, much more um, yeah, information in regards to this uh, particular vendor, uh, all the details and the people uh, associated. I can also um, uh, here see, for instance, the, the contacts that are linked to this vendor, so the people working uh, at Acer in this example. Um, and here, uh, yeah, a details tab with uh, specific information about this vendor, so uh, website and um, yeah, uh, um, uh, address information and all that kind of uh, that kind of stuff. Um, what's I'm not going to going to go click through everything, but what maybe is uh, is relevant to look at. I see also that there is a hierarchy here, right? so there are some downstream suppliers which can be considered essentially uh, fourth parties, uh, where that Acer is depending on that I can use also keep track of uh, to have a full end-to-end -end view on the supply chain. Um, let's have a look quickly at, um, yeah, at, at uh, some of the, uh, the engagement uh, related stuff. Okay, so I can see that here, I can keep track of many things. So I can really manage the entire vendor life cycle, not only in regards to risk, but also in regards to uh, my contracts that uh, uh, that I have uh, agreed upon with this vendor, uh, SLAs and tracking of that, of course, um, uh, and of course all the, the the related workflows for vendor risk. So our vendor engagements and assessments. Let's just have a, a quick look at that and and what that looks like. Eh? So here, I can see immediately I have a, a full view on all the ongoing engagements for a particular vendor. <clears throat> And when we later in the demo, let's say, are going to view from the vendor side of things, you will see also what that looks like. Um, yeah, but for now, let's open up an example uh, vendor engagement here. Um, uh, um, more detailed information about this particular vendor engagement, where I can also, for instance, uh, uh, if I zoom out just slightly, uh, I can see a number of ongoing assessments. I can initiate actually new assessments towards my vendor directly from uh, from this screen. Additionally, I could assign issues or tasks which can also be automatically generated um, from, for instance, uh, certain um, yeah, assessment failures uh, or uh, certain responses that we are receiving. Really at a glance, which you see uh, with a lot of, let's say, uh, possibilities to drill down onto different levels uh, to, to really manage the different engagement streams, assessment streams, with your vendor uh, through uh, a single uh, user interface. Um, what I want to do now is just give you 
a quick, let's say, uh, view on uh, the the other side of the fence, so to speak, the perception uh, from the um, yeah from the vendor. Um, so for that, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to quickly uh, change my uh, user. So now I'm gonna let's say uh, log in uh, or uh, impersonate a uh, uh, a fictive. Um, a fictive uh, contact from uh, from this particular vendor. Um, and what I'm looking at now is, uh, let's say, really the perspective, the user experience for the uh, for the vendor. So whenever an assessment is triggered or an issue is assigned by somebody in the organization towards a contact or the, the contacts within one of my suppliers, they can be notified via email or even, you know, via certain SMS functions, uh, but they have the ability also to immediately navigate here. They will be uh, asked in these notifications, for instance, to address a certain issue or an assessment. And once they click on a, on a URL in that email, they will be redirected to um, a, 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 a self-service portal, vendor risk portals that look something like this. So each uh, vendor is able to really fully interact with uh, your organization through uh, the single portal and thereby really uh, we're allowing to um, yeah to 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 streamline all correspondence information exchange through the platform uh, so I'm just gonna give you a quick view again this is all very much configurable um, it's a flexible let's say shell um, but this is what you would get um, yeah let's say out of the box so when you turn on the solution we can expose this immediately to our uh, yeah vendor ecosystem and as you can see a quick overview um, from the vendor perspective there is a number of assessments that are assigned to my company uh, some are overdue I have certain issues and tasks uh, and I see here actually an overview of uh, ongoing engagements. Uh, so again, an engagement is basically a container in which we can manage multiple assessments so we can have quite some granularity there. Uh, we were looking at, for instance, um, uh, the Acer purchasing en engagement. Uh, yeah, but let me just take uh, another um, another example. For instance, the um, let's have a look at the vendor IT risk assessment. Uh, and if I click on that, then I immediately see I have a number of questionnaires and a number of document requests that are part of this engagement that need to be uh, completed. So clicking a little bit further, um, and we will see that we will be redirected to uh, a more detailed overview uh, that shows uh, exactly the progress um, in this in regards to this engagement of the different uh, uh, questionnaires. I see a cloud security questionnaire. I see a privacy questionnaire and a, a SIG detail questionnaire. Of course, we can preload eh, SIG content immediately um, um, from our external content providers um, and use that in our uh, solution. Um, if I open up, for instance, the SIG detailed questionnaire 2022, um, what will happen is that we uh, we see we have a 190 uh, questions as part of this uh, questionnaire for our answered. And what we see then is uh, essentially a questionnaire that is uh, based upon the uh, SIG. Um, we can start to navigate through the different sections in this questionnaire. Um, we have the ability to fully configure and add different dimensions of questions to any type of questionnaire that we want. So lots of flexibility there for uh, specific uh, requirements that you would have in your organization. Um, I can also import already completed SIG questionnaires for, for instance, from a vendor perspective, I need to submit these kinds of vendor risk assessments, possibly for a lot of different customers. And I can actually use the import function here. If I have a completed SIG questionnaire already, then I can immediately import it here. So I don't as a vendor have to go through, let's say uh, all of these questions, which is going to, yeah, save a lot of effort and time on the vendor part, um, but also uh, in the overall uh, exchange of information and the risk engagement, it will make things much more efficient. So uh, uh, let's say throughput time to complete vendor risk assessments we really can be lowered with a function uh, like this. So we can see how uh, the standard questions here. Um, yeah, we can have different dimensions of questions, so multiple choice selection, uh, but also you know any other type of um, question dimension. 
where I can filter slightly also. So uh, I, um, the, uh, we have the ability to give um, certain uh, responses to particular questions from the organization side of things uh, with follow-ups and where I can actually, um, yeah, let's say, uh, have a look on that, uh, uh, filter on that. So if uh, certain questions have not been answered uh, satisfactorily, then from the vendor management side of things, so we can ask to follow up on certain questions and then uh, I can filter on that. I can keep, keep track of notes and comments and actually directly communicate uh, with the, uh, the vendor manager in here. Uh, so um, uh, a basic chat window and we can uh, do this on the different every, every different level. So we can do it on the questionnaire level, but also on the assessment level. So we have really uh, easy, let's say, way to communicate on, on different levels in the engagement and also there, thereby have very much centralizing also correspondence outside of the, the questionnaires and the document requests. So we have a really complete an accurate audit trail with rationale for uh, for regulators, for instance, uh, in case we are being audited as a, an organization on uh, our vendor risk management program. So very complete uh, uh, and easy to use solution, very much also from the vendor side of things. Um, yeah, maybe nice to, um, oh yeah, I need to, of course, I can save and exit. Um, yeah, and if I'm finished, yeah, I can, let's say, submit then my assessment and then uh, basically, on the other side of the fence, uh, again, on the uh, the organization's side of thing, we will start to be able to re to to monitor on submitted assessments with the dashboards and the reports that we were looking at earlier in this video. Maybe to have a quick look on also on uh, issues. Uh, so I see here there are uh, two open issues pending for me as a supplier for my customer. Um, yeah, what's also I think really cool is that for any type of um, uh, uh, workflow, so uh, assessment, engagement or anything, I have the ability to delegate or reassign to, to a colleague of mine as a vendor. So very often uh, we see that typically within the, the vendor side of things, there is one point, contact point. And however often uh, when we conduct a vendor risk assessment, we need information from different parts in the organization, from HR, from IT, from security. And this point of contact will typically help us eh, to find the right people in the organization, but that also be, can become a bottleneck in case of this person being on a holiday, for instance. And in our solution, eh, um, we really have the, uh, a lot of flexibility towards our vendor to, to manage their own teams, for instance. So here you can see I have some other colleagues that I can assign this particular issue to, but I can also do that with my assessments and with my engagements. And I can even, let's say, yeah, manage my whole team uh, with uh, this kind of uh, functionality. Let's just have a look at one uh, example issue. Um, uh, so here, yeah, another view from the vendor side of things. We can see again, it, it's, it's much more simplified, um, if you will. I can communicate immediately with uh, with the um, uh, with the uh, with, with the customer. Let's say uh, the customer can communicate with me as a vendor about what's happening. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of information here, so uh, we can communicate directly by uh, through a simple chat window. Uh, certain tasks can be assigned, can be linked to this issue to resolve the issue. That we can again also um, uh, communicate, interact on. Uh, where we can have multiple tasks to address a certain issues. And uh, I, it, we can also have, let's say, uh, additional questions from our question library being added to, uh, to an issue. Um, yeah, so I think uh, uh, just a, a quick view on, you know, what's possible with, uh, with vendor risk. You can see that uh, from both sides, uh, of the of the fence, so on the on the let's say the, the organization side of things, we have a lot of uh, possibilities to to report, to break, to to do breakdowns, to really manage the end-to-end -end vendor portfolio in a single pane of glass, and from the other side, a simplified uh, user-friendly experience for our vendors to s interact with us, to provide us with information, to communicate. Um, yeah, and this really, let's say, um, uh, lets us um, manage and navigate as a, 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 a larger and more complex uh, vendor ecosystem um, with the result of faster vendor risk engagements, 
uh, better data, better quality. So in case of audits, we'll be able to easily, let's say, demonstrate compliance because we have that complete and accurate audit trail in one system that we can immediately pull out and share with our regulator. And uh, all in all, of course, because of redundancies taken away, we're going to be much more cost effective. So um, yeah, um, if you have any follow up questions, let's say, or things that you would like to know more of, please reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you and to uh, give some insights on customers that, uh, that we worked with where we impl implemented the solution. Um, thank you so much for watching.